Hooray for summer! Sophie lived in a large city. The vegetables she ate usually came from the supermarket at the end of her street. One summer, Sophie went to stay with her grandparents in the countryside. She said goodbye to her family and her best friend, Victor, before catching the train. Her grandparents grew vegetables, and Sophie was looking forward to doing lots of fun things in the garden. That evening, she slept in a little bedroom under the eaves of the house. In the morning, the birds in the sunshine woke her, along with the delicious smell of hot chocolate her grandmother was making for breakfast. After breakfast, Granddad John took her out into the garden and gave her lots of tools, all just the right size. Oh, thank you, said Sophie. Granddad John showed Sophie a small patch of garden where she could grow her own vegetables. Before sowing the seeds, you need to take the rake to the ground. I like to sow carrots, radishes, and lettuce. Sophie decided. Granddad John gave her the three seed packets and labels. Then he marked three rolls with the handle off the rake and placed a bucket of earth nearby. Sophie wrote the names of the vegetables on the labels and stuck them into the ground. Next, she carefully scattered the seeds along the rolls. It wasn't easy. Finally, She covered the rolls with extra earth from the bucket and watered them. Well done, my little gardener, said Granddad John. In a few weeks, you'll be able to crunch your very own radishes. The next day, a little boy called Tom joined Sophie and Granddad John in the garden. Granddad John was carrying a basket full of straw. I've invited our young neighbor to help pick the peas, said Granddad John. But first, we need to mulch the onions, which means we spread straw around them. Let's go. Sophie and Little Tom had a great time. What does the straw do? asked Sophie. It keeps the earth damp and stops weeds from growing, explained Granddad John. As soon as you've finished... We can munch the freshest peas ever. He split open a pea pod and rolled peas into Sophie's hand. She closed her eyes and tasted one. It's delicious. They're really sweet, agreed little Tom. Better than candy. The birds loved the fresh raw peas too. But thankfully, the cat was nearby, so they didn't steal too many. Two pea pods, nine peas, one shallot, one onion, three radishes, three green beans. What's for dinner tonight, Granddad John? Flowers. Flowers? Yuck, cried Sophie. I'm much too hungry to eat flowers. Well, come with me. Granddad John showed Sophie a beautiful bush of tall artichoke stems. We need to cut the artichokes before they start to flower, he said. We'll eat the hearts. I love artichoke hearts, said Sophie. Next, Granddad John cut a head of broccoli. With broccoli, we are really eating the flowers. They're delicious, but I'm going to put a net over them to stop the pigeons eating them. Look, the broccoli and the cauliflowers are thirsty. I'll water them, said Sophie. One cauliflower, one artichoke, one head of broccoli. A path in the garden was overgrown with weeds. Grandma skillfully pulled them out with a hoe, and Sophie helped her with the garden claw. While they were weeding, They sang songs. Weeding is fun, said Sophie. Over in the cold frames, the lettuce seeds were growing into little plants, kept warm by the glass. 
It's time to transplant them into the main garden, said Granddad John. So they've got room to grow bigger. I'll help, said Sophie. I've got my dibber. Sophie made equally spaced holes in the earth along Granddad John's neat rows and carefully planted the baby lettuces. Finally, she watered the little plants. That evening, Sophie and her grandma were strolling in the garden. They stopped and looked at the bees buzzing around the flowers' blue pants. Bees are so important, said Grandma. Without them, flowers wouldn't be pollinated and become pea pods and there wouldn't be any peas. How does a flower turn into a pea pod? asked Sophie. Grandma fetched a pencil and paper. Here's the flower. With tiny peas along its pistil, sweet nectar at its century, and a fine dust called pollen at the end of its pistil. When the bee goes into the flower to drink nectar, it gets covered in pollen, which it carries to the next flower it visits. The pollen rubs off onto the tiny peas in the next flower and makes them grow. Wow, bees are amazing, cried Sophie.